Hey everybody, welcome to Building Enter Guys. On this episode, we're gonna build a platform frame for the R car. So let's get started. One of the goals of the platform was to be lightweight for battery efficiency. One of the holy grails of lightweight materials is carbon fiber, and I really wanted to use carbon fiber for this R car. However, connecting carbon fiber tubes together might be challenging to ensure their structural integrity. And I don't know if I have enough time to figure that all out. Also, they're a bit pricey. So I decided once again, I hope you guessed it by now, aluminum extrusions, because I love this material. It's lightweight, so the vehicle can be efficient. It's rigid and strong, and can be easily cut in a bandsaw. Also, it won't rust, and won't require any kind of finishing. <laughs> and those are really sharp. One popular option is to use steel, and then weld it together. I might do this for a future project. But steel is a lot heavier than aluminum, so you require more battery power. Also, steel requires welding, and welding is a bit more tricky to do in my current workspace. Steel also requires finishing, otherwise it rusts just like this one is. Going with aluminum over steel is gonna be a little bit more pricey and require bolts and adapter plates to connect everything together. The platform frame will be made by very long pieces of aluminum extrusions and then bolted together with very large bolts and glue so it won't come apart. The 3D printed battery modules will be put inside and then sealed off. So I needed to figure out which profile types to use to handle varying weight requirements of the frame. So given distribution points, for example, where posts would go down to a frame where people would be sitting or standing, I know what the weight requirements would be in that area. So the company that makes aluminum extrusion, 8020, has this great online deflection calculator that helps solve this problem for us. You put in the load on the actual profile piece, so either center it or disperse along it, then select the actual profile type, and it will show you if you're able to handle it or not. See the deflection or the bend that will result in that piece once you put the load on it. So a high value here would mean the piece would probably bend or break and not be able to hold that weight, which isn't ideal. You can see here I put in a 500 pound load and centered in a one by one inch profile means the deflection is 0.27, which means it's probably going to break. So if I went to a one by three inch piece and I still had the 500 pound load centered in the piece, then it would actually be way under 0.01 inch of deflection. So that's great. Well, what if I actually went up to 60 inch length, which is more what the length of the platform is going to be. And then I put 800 pound load on there. Well, that's basically under 0.1, so we're good. So using this tool and some math, I was able to design the frame with different profile types to have the weight requirements. One thing I really like about aluminum is it's super easy to cut in a bandsaw with a metal blade. I started to cut the lengths of aluminum extrusions based on a 3D model and drilling holes for connections. So I started using these bigger bolts to connect the frame together. These are 5 16 24, fine threading, and zinc plated. The fine threading helps against vibrations, and the 5 16 helps make sure it can handle the pull and weight requirements on the R-Car. One thing I really learned on the first R-Car was to use quality parts. So I started to order all my parts from a master car. They have great quality and fast shipping. With the aluminum extrusions now cut and the holes drilled, it's time to start assembling. It's like a huge puzzle to put together. You ever have those times where you just want to use a huge sledgehammer because those bolts just wouldn't go in? Aluminum is a pretty soft material to work with, so it's important to use a mallet over a hammer or even a sledgehammer when you're banging in those bolts to make sure you're not causing any damage. You'll notice I use washers underneath all the bolt heads so that when tightening, the bolt heads wouldn't go into the grooves of the aluminum extrusion. The 90 degree brackets you see me putting in right now are going to be used for extrusions that will hold the plexiglass floor. The one by one inch aluminum extrusions are going to be used to hold the batteries in place. They'll be connected to the bottom of the platform with 90 degree brackets. Here we have the EV cross member. It goes in the very middle of the vehicle and holds up the battery packs and forms a structural support for the floor of the vehicle. It's made by two 3 by one inch extrusions in the very middle bolted together, and then two one by one inch extrusions on the sides. The one by ones are for a little structural rigidity, but also hold the edges of the battery packs, which are 3D printed. And the two by ones bolt on the very top of this cross member, and they go across the platform to the edges. With the primary cross member now complete, 
The focus shifts to putting together all those other pieces to form the frame. I found it easiest to actually print out pieces of paper of different views of the 3D model so I can understand visually how all the pieces come together. I had a few goals in mind when I was designing the platform for the R car. I wanted a very compact, maintainable area for all of the batteries to be placed into, but I also wanted them to be seen. I wanted to have a plexiglass floor that people can stand on, dance on, and see the batteries right below them with lights underneath that can be playing sequences. And that's the whole concept behind the warp floor. Passengers are going to be boarding from the rear of the vehicle and they're walking up the middle. There's going to be a small shelf platform sitting on top of the Mazda Miata subframe and then that's going to be bolted to the platform. The Mazda Miata subframe, that's the piece you see here in black, actually used to connect to the rest of the vehicle using these big holes and bolts. So I decided to repurpose them to connect the platform to the subframe using these big pieces of aluminum sheets. This also gives me the flexibility to take off the platform from the subframe whenever I want to. The job of the control arms is to allow the wheel to pivot left or right during steering operations, and then also hold the wheel in place during suspension operations up or down. And then be able to transfer and hold up to a thousand pounds from the frame to the tire. So what I'm trying to figure out is this is going to mount to a bar that comes this way. And this is pivoting up and down for the rotor and the, the spindle here, wheel. Um, so this pivots up and down with the, uh, with the suspension. But why is this one like this and not like that to actually make it a roller, which is super weird. So what I'm thinking is, because I checked the, I checked some of the Miata pictures uh, on, online and for the frame, actually comes with the front end of the car. Uh, and they don't seem to have an area that actually is like a, a ball point joint or you know any kind of joint that moves. So what I'm thinking is this has a little give maybe because of the bushing. So if I bolt it in and it has like a little bit of a little bit of a movement that'll provide that uh, enough movement on that uh, on that control arm to be able to handle the suspension properly. Here we have the bottom of the front frame taking shape. I put some extra bolts in different angles to provide more support, especially in areas where there would be a lot of force, because the black Tina connectors that you see here are rated for very low loads. These long 3x1s you see right here connect the front of the frame to the platform, and they're glued together using Gorilla Glue and bolted to make sure they're really strong. With the platform not complete, I added some weather stripping. I'm hoping to actually form some airtight seal to prevent the Burning Man sand from coming inside the platform and interacting with the battery packs. So I need to find some sort of material I could use as paneling for the R car. It had to be lightweight, sturdy, and be able to handle sandstorms in the desert. You might have guessed it, but I turned to aluminum once again. Is it aluminum or aluminium? Aluminum? Aluminium. Aluminum. Aluminium. Aluminum. Aluminum? Aluminium? Say that five times fast. Aluminum composite paneling is made from aluminum on the outside and then plastic on the inside. They're fairly flexible, lightweight, and rigid while being inexpensive compared to full sheets of thicker aluminum paneling. In order to cut costs, I went to Alibaba direct to an aluminum composite panel factory in China, and I got the last stock they had in paneling. So this was a really stressful experience. Just four months away from Burning Man, and I'm shipping something overseas. You have no idea when it's gonna actually arrive, how much the final cost of shipping is gonna be, until it actually gets here. There are so many fees. When the cargo arrives at the port, you have to go to customs to get it approved. So security scans all the containers coming off the cargo ship. They may decide that your container needs to be scanned again or be inspected by a third party, and you're on the hook for all those fees. So at the end of the day, after all this hassle and stress, it turns out it costs about the same amount of money to ship something from Amazon. However, I was able to get these huge panels. They're eight by four feet. That's not exactly something you can just order online. So I really don't recommend ordering something overseas unless you need something really huge. So the panels are out of the distribution warehouse. This is where truckers go to pick up cargo. So I rented a trailer and showed these truckers my mad backup skills with the Model X. I had the forklift, dropped them onto the trailer. This was one of the first times I was actually towing with the Model X, which was pretty fun to do. And then I unloaded and opened up these panels. I ended up getting a black panel, a silver metallic panel, and a couple white panels. So I decided to put the black panel with this amazing shimmer at the bottom of the art car. I was a little bit sad because it was hidden away, but it looked amazing. It was pretty rigid and flexible at the same time, and really fit exactly what I was looking for in a lightweight material to compact and seal the batteries inside. So you're probably wondering, how easy is it to work with aluminum composite panels? How do you actually separate and cut them? So I actually use the mark, score, and bend method. So that's where you use a marker, utility knife, and then bend them back and forth until they break. This worked really well for like the big cuts. When it came to something more intricate, or I just wanted to speed up the process, I put it through the bandsaw, or just use the Dremel Saw Max. Then I bolted the panels to the frame using 12 5 16 bolts. Later, I'm going to add the plexiglass to the opposite side. 
The platform is starting to look complete. Now we have a frame that goes all the way from the front of the car, but we have the connection points, the control arms, suspension and steering, all the way to the platform, to the back and rear of the car. The black panel is now bolted to the bottom of the platform. And surprisingly, it's liftable by just me. From what remained of the black paneling, I created an angle piece for the front bottom portion of the platform. The final step was to put Gorilla Glue in places I never wanted to take apart again. What I liked about using Gorilla Glue was it expanded into joints that were bolted together and formed a really good seal. Also, it's inexpensive compared to other glues out there. I ramped up 3D printing of the wire channel holders that go on the insides of the platform and hold the battery modules in place. Then I installed the upright frame supports that hold the seats and the saucer in place. With the platform frame of the Arcar now complete, it's time to design, 3D print, and assemble those battery modules. If you like this episode, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, hit the subscribe and notification buttons to be alerted for new episodes each Thursday.